stand behind that thing because I'd look like one of those dogs in the window with the head going up and down like that. So I always stand out here. So they put me first because I'm kind of hyper, right? <laughs> Just a little hyper. So I wake up every day around 5.15 and I get up and I start moving and then I stop around 8 o'clock at night. <laughs> right like that. So who woke up this morning around 6 o'clock and went, God, I feel good. I cannot wait to get up, get dressed, drive downtown, find parking, and go to this conference. If you felt like that this morning, go, yeah. yeah. Wow. OK, so who out there went, is that my alarm? Holy crap, is that my alarm? Why is my alarm going off? Holy Moses. Oh, that's right, I got to get up. I paid for this. I got to go. Who felt like that this morning, just so, yeah? <laughs> All right, and here's the last court category. Who heard the alarm go off at 6 o'clock, rolled over and checked your pulse and went, yeah, I'm still here. Yep, still here. I didn't die last night. I'm still here. So I'm 55, and I have a lot of days when I roll over and go, was that my alarm? Holy cow, I have to get up. So I picked a topic that I thought was pretty important for most people. So who heard all the inspirational speakers yesterday? Who was here yesterday? Yeah, so I'm going to give you a quick recap, because I was sitting in the back, and I am a retired Army intelligence officer, so I'm always analyzing people's presentations. <laughs> and I'm always looking for patterns. So there was a huge pattern that started right away with Jenny Q, and Jenny Q said, all right, it's your time to embrace technology. And it takes a lot of courage to embrace technology. And then we got Alicia Hubing, and Alicia said, you got to battle your inner bear. She's afraid of bears. And it took a couple years to get the courage to go backpacking in Yellowstone, and there were bears. You gotta battle your inner bear. You have to have courage and self-confidence to go out and do things and to try things and to innovate and to innovate yourself. And then we got Shelby, and Shelby stood up and Shelby talked about, all right, you have to have courage to make huge change. And she's in the self-care industry. She does, she's got a beautiful salon. And she said, I had to change the culture. And part of changing the culture was Shelby changing Shelby. So Shelby had to invest in her own self-care so she could make that kind of change. Then Nick got up here, and this human being who's like this tall and this big told you how hard it was for him when his life didn't take the path he wanted to take. And it took an enormous amount of courage to move forward. And then we got the five-foot-two football player. All right, who, who remember your stance? Everybody up, who remembers it? Up on your feet. <laughs> All right, get your, protect, get your stance ready. All right, same thing in karate. Just take one foot forward, slide it forward. Another foot forward, slide it forward, center your weight over your shoulders. Pick up your shoulders, push them back, drop them down. Boom! <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah. So she told us how much courage it took and how much self-confidence it took to be a five-foot-two football player and then to start playing with guys, right? And she finished yesterday with, if you want to be more and do more and say more, you have to have courage, and you have to set goals, and you have to do something first, right? That's what she said. So I'm going to sw switch gears for you. My message today is you got to take care of yourself. If you want to be more, do more, and say more, you've got to just be, do less, and say less. So I'm 55 years old, <laughs> hyper overachiever. <laughs> And for about the last five years, we've been through it. So my father's in the final stages of Parkinson's, and they moved here so I could help my mom. My oldest one was serving in the military and developed a traumatic brain injury and got booted back home. And for three years, I was his advocate, trying to get him medical care, trying to get him through the medical system, trying to get him medically retired. God gave me three kids in four years. We figured out how that happened. We got a television in the master bedroom. But... <laughs> <laughs> But God gave me three kids in four years. All three of my kids were born with an autoimmune disease. We spent seven years going back and forth to doctors and hospitals, and the youngest one showed up with the autoimmune disease and a hearing loss, and he didn't speak till he was three and a half. So for three and a half years, my son communicated by fussing and screaming. <sighs> yeah, and if you met him now, you'd be like, oh yeah, she's just making that stuff up. <laughs> but it took me a long time to figure out that I had to do self-care. Because in the military, what did I do? I analyze bad people. High stress job. If I don't do it right, people die, right? Then God gave me three kids who were stressed out all the time because they were sick all the time. I had to figure out self-care. I was fortunate enough to have an executive coach when I was in Girl Scouts. It took Jan three years to pound this idea into my head. Three years to help me understand why I needed to do self-care. So I've got about 14 minutes left to tell you what it took me 55 years to learn. <laughs> And I'm just going to do 12 simple, 
12 simple ways you can take care of yourself every day, and I call it an hour of power. And most people go, I don't have an hour to do this. Maureen, I've got a job, I've got a family, I don't have an hour. So I turn it into four 15-minute increments. I do 15 minutes when I get up, 15 minutes at lunchtime, 15 minutes at the end of the day, and 15 minutes before I go to bed. And that way I get an hour of power and I don't have to carve an hour out in the middle of the day. And I'm gonna go through some of these and you're gonna go, oh, she doesn't really do that. Yes, she does. <laughs> yes, she does. So most of us start our day going, it's Monday, right? Where'd it go? It's not up there. And you start Monday like this, I think I can, I think I can, I think can. And this is what happens by Wednesday at four o'clock. <laughs> this is exactly what happens, right? That's why the self-care talk is pretty important. Do you have these kind of thought balloons going in your head? I'm tired all the time, and I'm tired of being tired. Next one, did I really just say that out loud? I catch myself doing that all the time. <laughs> And I don't want to do that right now. I just want to sit on the porch. I don't want to go to work. I don't want to volunteer. I just want to sit here. If those kind of things are going through your head, you've got to figure out how to relax and how to recover. So this was a busy man. Jesus was a very busy man. His ministry only lasted three years, and he was surrounded by 12 guys. Now, just imagine this, 12 guys, no showers, <laughs> no personal hygiene kits, no beds, no particular place to sleep. They don't understand what you're saying most of the time. They're bickering among themselves all the time. It's like the three-year camping trip from Hades. <laughs> <laughs> so, but when you're going through the Bible, you keep hearing Jesus went off to be alone. He went off to pray. He went off to meditate. He got that whole concept of self-care. <laughs> he got that one. <laughs> so if you want to be selfless with your energy, you gotta figure out how to be selfish with some of your time every day. You gotta figure that one out. So like that one, I take a 10 minute break. Where's Wendy, my walking buddy? Wendy, where are you? Big shout out. So I brought Wendy last year and, and we became walking buddies and we get together about once a week and we do a 50 minute walk. No phones, no nothing, we just walk. We walk and talk. Take a break, I, I walk my dog every day, 15 minutes first thing in the morning, no phone, just me and a dog. And he's 13 and a half so we don't go very quickly. I've got to pick, I'm going to pick up dinner, sit and make dinner. I started cooking when I was 11. I'm from a Catholic family. Everybody had to go to work in the recession, so I was in charge of dinner. I would much rather pick up a chicken dinner deal than make dinner. <laughs> I do that one a lot now. <laughs> I'll take a walk with Wendy. I'll take chai, tai chi, or I'll drink chai tea, or I'll do both. <laughs> <laughs> so my first tip is spend time with a pet. All right, so the first, the first picture up there is cats. How many cat people do we have? All right, cats are by, by far the most popular pet in the United States, hands down. Spend time with a pet, right? They purr, they lean up against you, they try to take over your pillow, but they're calming. Birds, you can talk to them, they try to talk back. Just have someone to talk to when you get home. And here's my favorite, dogs. <laughs> so over here is Merlot. Merlot is my 13 and a half year old schnauzer. Caught the name, right? Merlot, yeah. <laughs> when I get home from work, when he was a puppy, I was working three part-time jobs and I had three little kids. And I trained that dog, I came home every day and I gave him a treat, right? This is on purpose, because when I got home, I wanted some being in the house to be happy to see me. <laughs> so I would come in and I would come through the garage door and I'd go, where's the best dog on the planet? Where's the best dog? Who's the best dog? Where's the best dog? Dog would come running over, I'd lean down and give him a treat, right? And he goes, I missed you so much. <laughs> Where were you? <laughs> And when that was over, he'd jump up here, and I'd put him like this, he jumps up, and I pet his ears, and then it starts. I open the front door, and we go out together, and I chase him all over the front yard. And I'm running, this is real, you can go by and film it. Go by my front door. I'm going out there every day, let the dog out, and he goes running through the yard, and we start playing tag. And I am shouting at the top of my lung, who the dog, you the dog, who the dog, you the dog, who the dog, you the dog, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> After about, we well, least 13 and a half, so after about two minutes, he gets a little tired. We have the same pattern. He gets a little tired, he lays down, he rolls over. I jump on him, I give him a belly blaster. <laughs> now, if you have a snake, don't try this. <laughs> but spend time with a pet. When my husband goes on travel, guess who gets his side of the bed? Yeah. And he doesn't snore as loud as my husband. So that's the first one. 
Watch something uplifting, Sylvie. What is that, that guy movie? What movie is that? Rudy, right? This is the scene when he looks at Rudy at five foot seven, 165 pounds, and, he, and Rudy's walking off the football team because he's not going to play. And he looks at him and he goes, you're five foot nothing, 100 pound nothing. You ain't got a speck of athletic ability, but you hung in there for two years with the best football team in the United States. In this life, you ain't got to prove nothing to nobody but yourself. And if you ain't done it by now, you ain't ever going to do it. I want this guy in my house. <laughs> right? So when I'm at home and I start, I'm making dinner, I'm folding, I'm mending, I'm ironing, I always put on like 15 minutes of a funny movie or an uplifting movie, right? I don't put on scary movies. If I want to be scared, I'm going to go on a plane and watch a person with two small children come down the aisle and sit with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and how many people like the Pride and the Prejudice? Pride and the Prejudice, right? I have probably watched that movie 100 times. Who does not want a six foot two handsome man to look at you and go, I love, love, love you, and I don't ever want to be parted from you again. Yeah, I want him in my house too, <laughs> right? <laughs> and this is the last one. This is just because that man could hang up his cape at my house any day. <sighs> this is why my husband doesn't come hear me speak, right? <laughs> All right, this is another one. Um, I actually did martial arts for seven years, I tore my hamstring, and it didn't heal correctly, so now I have a hip that rotates out sideways and a leg that hurts all the time, and I broke my arm. Yeah, the physical therapist said, you really need to stop, okay. So I actually soak in a hot tub about three nights a week. I sit in there with that little bath bomb, you go, here it comes, there's a bath bomb. Psst, that little fizzing sound? Yeah. So I sit in there and I read a book. How many people take baths on a regular basis? Does it make you feel better? Yeah, you wonder why you fussed about this when you were a kid. <laughs> and you can do this if you want. Okay. <laughs> Tip number four, read something uplifting. All right, Winnie the Pooh. I love Winnie the Pooh, I'm 55 years old, I just read it again about a week ago. One of my favorite quotes from the wise bear is people say nothing is impossible. I do nothing all the time. <laughs> I do not read scary things. I have a list of books by my bed. I take the last 15 minutes of every single night and I read something uplifting every single night. Next is Connie Miller's book. I just got it yesterday. I take a walk. So I used to be a distance runner. I, I can't do that anymore. So now I take a walk every day. I walk with Wendy once a week. I walk with the dog twice a day. He gets a 15 minute walk in the morning and a 15 minute walk in the afternoon. I just walk. I don't have any headphones. I stop and talk to the dogs. If there's neighbors out, I talk to the neighbors. I just walk. Find a friend and just go take a walk. Today at lunch, go take a walk. It's supposed to be beautiful. Take a walk. Write in a journal. So where is Luke? Luke, are you out there? <laughs> All right, so Luke actually has a journal out there. And it's only five bucks. And you can draw pictures. You can write things in it. But I, I've been writing in a journal since my third child was born. Like I said, three kids in four years. And the youngest one couldn't sleep because he was in so much pain. So much pain. I actually slept on the floor holding him until he was four and a half. Slept on the floor. So when he was about three months old, I started writing a journal every day. And I call it a, a, a gratitude journal. And I would get up every morning and I would write two or three things I was thankful for. And this is how it actually started in 1997. I am grateful for this cup of coffee. I am grateful that he slept two hours last night. That's how it started. I have 53 journals now. I still do it every morning. And I went from two or three things, then 10 things, and now I actually fill a couple pages. And I've even gotten to the point now that I say, and thank you for all the good stuff happening today, and I list it out. Am I gonna walk with Wendy? Is my husband picking up dinner? Am I gonna stop and see my dad? I write in advance, keep a journal, keep a journal. Eat chocolate. <laughs> I eat chocolate every day. And people who say that chocolate kills dogs, my 13 and a half year old schnauzer has eaten an entire pan of brownies, an entire cake and a one pound chocolate bar and he's still with us. One year, I put the Halloween candy out, those little miniature bars. I have no idea how he did this. I went to work. He climbed up on the dining room table, knocked the bowl off, and when I got home, all the wrappers were on the floor. How did he do that? <laughs> Eat chocolate every day, and this is why. 
<laughs> I'm 55 and I... <laughs> I still like the beaters. I'm 55 years old. <laughs> Exercise. All right, so they told me I had to do this. <laughs> Exercise with your pet, right? Okay, so they told me I had to do this for you because I do exercise six days a week. This is a woman doing a push-up and she's got a straw going into a wine bottle. All right, so Jenny Q, this is for you. Jenny Q said I had to do this. There. <laughs> Okay, spend time alone. <laughs> so when my kids were little, I would try to go in the bathroom and close the door so I could be alone. <laughs> and the youngest one would come up to the door and put his chubby little fingers underneath there. <laughs> and I'd say, if it isn't bleeding, broken, and there's not imminent danger, walk away now. <laughs> Find a way to be alone. All right, so I sit on the back porch with a dog all summer and into the fall. This is a woman hiding in her closet. Has anybody ever done that? <laughs> Two people hiding in their closet. <laughs> I need to be alone. I told my mother this, who cares for my father. I said, you get to be alone, Mom? Not really. Go spend time in the bathroom, Mom. Be alone. Have a garden. Have a garden. Uh, my mother's an amazing gardener. I didn't grow up in a gardening family. We were military, we moved all the time. But she always planted a garden. So when I spent time with my mom, it was in the garden. Not a great gardener, but I love being outside. I talk to the plants, I talk to the trees, I pull the weeds and I say, I'm really sorry to do this, but you can't live here, and I yank them out of the ground. <laughs> so spend time in a garden. Prayer and meditation. Prayer is when we talk to God. Meditation is when we're quiet and we listen for an answer. I'm not really good at that, <laughs> right? <laughs> I can't sit quietly. That's what I try to do in the tub. But I actually include prayer every single day. So I lived in Central America for a while. It was incredibly dangerous. I was the first woman to deploy to a joint exercise in Peru with the Peruvian army. And while we were there, the Sendero Luminoso infiltrated the capital city. Kind of scary, <laughs> kind of scary. I was on an extraction mission once and they put me on the team because they had to extract a woman and they wanted Howard to have a woman on the plane with her when we left. Me being Catholic, we go, the plane's going down the strip, they're firing at the plane and I'm thinking, we're not gonna get off the ground here. I pull out my rosary. I said the rosary for three hours straight. <laughs> Just pray, when you're feeling stressed out, pray. Okay, and here comes the last one, pamper yourself. I learned this here last year, last year. I'm not anyone who gets a manicure or a pedicure. I don't get facials. I just don't do those kind of things. It just isn't part of my nature. But I put my card in some of those buckets out there and I want a free facial at Vita Novu. And I want a gift certificate for nice facial, facial product, skincare product. And I want a healing session with Denise Gar Nygaard and I am hooked. I am hooked. I went to Shelby's studio and she fixed my hair. I wore the same haircut for 20 years because it can't touch your ears, it can't touch your collar, right? Just keep it short. And I told Danny, I said, I've been doing the same thing for 20 years, do something different. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> I called my daughter and I said, I look like a model, a 55-year-old model, but I look like a model today. She goes, send a picture. Great. But that's what I learned here, pamper yourself, pamper yourself. So take care of yourself. Like my husband, I, I'm not picking on men, don't take this personally. My husband doesn't think anything of buying tickets to the, to the Boise State basketball for the whole season. He doesn't think anything of going to watch Notre Dame play football, which is playing fair, a hotel room and a rental car. He doesn't think anything of the fact that we have an old boat that we have to keep fixing. You know, this is just, this is how he takes care of himself. And I was like, wow, for how much money he spends on those kind of things, I could get a facial once a week, <laughs> right? <laughs> So just take care of yourself. There we go. All right. <laughs> yeah, so that is where I get to stop. But I would challenge you to do at least that hour of power every day. Figure out what you do to take care of yourself. Sing, do you sing? Do you sing in the shower? Do you sing in the car? 
Do you stand in the shower for 15 minutes? What are four things you can do and take an hour of power every single day? And then I'm a big fan of writing stuff down because the act of actually writing imprints it in your brain and it makes a commitment to yourself. So before you leave today, write down two things you're willing to do every single day to take care of yourself. All right, thank you.